It begins with games, with boys on a backyard lot, a country field, a city street, with running and throwing, with Boomer Asias and Greg Hill. young men running under the empty air. Reaching for a ball in the silent sky. It begins with hitting and hard work. Yards of boyhood to Bird Stadium on a Saturday afternoon. College football is an American rite, an autumn ritual, a celebration of excellence, courage, and community. A ceremony of passage, of passage out, of passage to challenge and achievement, purpose, and pride. A passage led by head coach Bobby Ross. For Bobby Ross, the football years, the college years, the Maryland years are the special seasons. The goal-setting seasons. The proud seasons. to body against the best college teams in the North, the East, and the South. Maryland football begins with basics, with hitting. Wing left, wing left strongs out, 37 leads to Today against Pitt, power blocking and power running. The drive of Dave Daddio, fullback. The dodging and dancing and wildness of Willie Joyner, halfback. The coolness and long range kicking of Jeff Atkins. Basic football means defense. And defense means the size and strength of a Pete Cox, the intensity of an Eric Wilson, the wide tackle six, and the wave tackling of Tyrone Firm, Eric Wilson, J.D. Gross, and Bobby DuPont. For Maryland, a defense built on the willingness to work hard and the willingness to dream hard. Eric Wilson, linebacker. You know, I've grown up all my life um, 
uh, with football being around me, it's, it's been my dream ever, you know, always to, to have a shot at playing pro football. For four decades they have come, coaches and players drawn by dreams, drawn by legends. Legends like Paul Bear Bryant, who won his first college games with the University of Maryland. Jim Tatum, who won a national championship here. And Jerry Claiborne, who built powerful, nationally ranked defenses. Players like Lloyd Barron, strong safety for the Kansas City Chiefs. Neil Ogilwitz, middle linebacker for the world champion Washington Redskins. Players like Randy White, the Manster, defensive guard for the Dallas Cowboys. A perennial all-pro and the most valuable player in the Super Bowl. As far as the uh, the line play at the University of Maryland, it, it really uh, prepared me quite a bit uh, for for pro ball, especially with uh, the Dallas Cowboys, because we play uh, University of Maryland, they play techniques and they play keys, and it's the same type of uh, defense we use here with the Dallas Cowboys now. So, you know, that, that really helped me and give me a, a jump uh, coming into pro football. Brian and Tatum, Neil Okowitz, and Randy White. In the high autumns above Bird Stadium, their names hang like a banner like a beckoning, and the players come, the starters and the subs, the Eric Wilsons and the walk-on, the red shirt and the special team. They come and keep coming, Cott and Joyce, Parker and McHale, The linemen and the linebackers, Wilson and Forsett, Baker and Gross, and Shankweiler. Searching in their sunlight years for the chance to climb, reach, and soar after physical excellence, after football excellence. Carrying in their hands and hearts like Brian Baker by the goal line, their boyhood dreams of game-breaking play. After spring practice and summer workouts and autumn scrimmage, reaching for a chance to hang their own names in the golden air. Paul Bear Bryant and Jim Tatum. Those names still echo around the practice fields of College Park, calling up the dreams that drive men like Bobby Ross. So our ultimate goal is to win a national championship at the University of Maryland. Uh, that's what we all want. That's what we're achieving. That's, uh, uh, that's what we're working for. The first step. So we set as a goal to win our Atlantic Coast Conference Championship. To a team with a tradition of physical strength and fundamental defense, Bobby Ross, a coach out of the Kansas City Chiefs, brings an offense built on the highest scoring teams in the National Football League. Well, we have a very clear-cut offensive philosophy here. It's based on your top teams in the National Football League, offensively speaking, statistically speaking. An offense based on multiple formations, shifting formations, a balance of running and passing, and a high degree of unpredictability. Last one, last one. Here's some keys to this, to this game, okay? Now, we finished the physical preparation. All right, pay attention here, okay? Just pay close attention. We finished the physical preparation. One of the really significant factors to this game is what we do in terms of concealing our defenses. In you can take away a lot of their offense with your movement, okay? 
if you're moving back and forth, and not too early, but throughout the entire football game, keeping your poise, okay, you can take away a lot of their offense. Okay, offensively, all right. The big key is coverage recognition. All right, they play primarily three coverages. What are they, Boomer? Number three, number double. Can college players handle a pro-style offense? In Bird Stadium under homecoming sky, a high noon shootout between two of the best growing college quarterbacks in the country. At one end of the street, Ben Bennett of Duke the most prolific passer in NCAA history. At the other end, Boomer Esaias with an offense out of Bobby Ross. An offense for the quick feet and quicker hands of Greg Hill. An offense for the long pass and the short pass. For the drop back, the sprint out and the roll out. For the flare pass and the screen pass. An offense based on balance. The balance of run to pass. The balance of Rick Bedanik on an off tackle cutback. An offense for the unexpected. For shifting formation. Multiple formation. And misdirection for multiple moves and shifting feet. Above all, an offense for excellence, for the exceptional athlete. for the player who would like to take his boyhood dreams to playing fields beyond Bird State. Out of dreams come talent. For those who would be linemen and linebackers, for Tyrone Furman and Brian Baker and Eric Wilson. Those who would be wide receivers and running backs. For Sean Sullivan, for Willie Joyner. The college years, the Maryland years mean dreams on a larger field. Fields like the College Park campus of the University of Maryland. At College Park, Education means options and opportunities. Options like 130 undergraduate majors. Opportunities like Washington, D.C., 10 miles to the south. And Baltimore, 30 miles to the north. The challenge for those who would take it of moving into wider world. Coach Bobby Ross. There are things uh, beyond football. My job as the head football coach here at the University of Maryland, is to, to not always tell our players what they want to hear, uh, but to always act in their best interest. I think first and foremost, a young man should get out of uh, the University of Maryland uh, an education. The time needs to be spent in communicating with players in terms of their personal goals uh, and, of course, what they want to do with their lives after they finish school. Work, self-discipline, and a sense of purpose promise you that we are going to be ready and are going to represent you in this outstanding fashion. Purpose fired by passion. The community of passion that is College Park in the fall. I'd just like to reiterate what Coach Ross said. And, uh, as far as tomorrow's game goes, uh, uh, I think uh, the worst hated color in my repertoire is light blue. I can't stand it. I hate everything about it. I hate everything that's associated with it. So it is true. And 
Well, in fact, this is my last game and the rest of our else's last game here. I think the most important thing that we can do for all of you is go out with a win and go out with a big win, and I promise you that from the bottom of my heart that that's what we're going to do tomorrow. To go out playing, to go out winning, to go out burning. <laughs> Army and Navy, Notre Dame and Southern Cal, Michigan and Ohio State, Maryland and North Carolina. For Captain Pete Cox, a time for leader. We got three hours coming out, babe. We can walk up the field, win or lose them. We get no chance of coming back at this one. You got three hours to give. You got three of the best hours of your life. A time for linebackers, for J.D. Gross. And Eric Wilson, Jr. A time for special teams and special plays. For Bobby Gunderman. A time for linemen and running backs. For Ron Salt. And for Willie Joint. And for some of them, for the seniors, for Boomer Atiasen, a time for last thoughts about bird feeding. Against the third ranked team in the country, against the blue and white of North Carolina, the black and gold, the red and white. The passion of a bird stadium park, the pride of players holding their home ground. The planning of a Bobby Ross coaching staff. We pause automatically. We pause automatically. It'll be 48. Gonna run like hell. Against the shadow of defeat, against losing, against passing time, they came back and they came together. The senior quarterback and the junior receiver. And the sophomore running back. They came with passing and running and risk taking. Standing in the valley of defeat, they came with the line blocking of Araka and Salt, Glover and Venezia were the hands and legs of Rick Badanek and the downfield blocking of Sean Benson. Into the valley they came, reaching for dreams, reaching with the high-risk boldness of a Bobby Ross team. They came with Bill Rogers, the transfer, with John Sullivan, the freshman. For Boomer Esiason, a last shot at leaving his legend behind. Well, halftime, I was saying to myself that I felt that I didn't play as well as I had wanted to for my last home game. And I had a little talk to myself at halftime, saying that this is it. This is your last 30 minutes in Bird Stadium. And you better go out and play with your heart and everything that you've had.
calling out for Boomer Esiason of Long Island, New York, a last shot at legend making. For the freshmen coming in, for Sean Sullivan of Philadelphia, an early chance at heroism. When we come running out on that field, it's just like a head rush. There's those people behind you, and they're screaming. And it, you know that they're going to be a part of, of this day's game. For something, it was just destiny that we were going to win that game. And everybody played like that. In the fading light and falling darkness, destiny was defense. The courage and force of Cox and Thurman facing their last fourth quarter here. Destiny was the lightning and leaping that is Lendell Jones. The quick reads and quicker charges of J.D. Gross. The wildness of Eric Wilson. You just get in a groove. You get in a groove and, and start, you know, flying around the field and making a hit. You're up and uh, you're expected to run around like a crazy man and, and try to take people's heads off. In the dark fury of the fourth quarter, in the final grab at victory, Destiny is the game-breaking gambling of J.D. Gross. in the games of autumn. On the playing field, it is there. On the bench and in the stand. For players and coaches, fans and fanatics. An energy out of dreams that can lift men to higher levels and greater risks. That can carry them out of themselves into a community of courage, commitment, and love. sowing, reaping. There is a season for all things. After spring practice and summer workout, after the agonies of autumn, after victory, after defeat, after the testing, a time for triumph, a season for victory, and a season for passion. Anything we do, uh, regardless of what it may be or how big or small it may be, the, the bottom line is to win. But I think that a, a young man uh, from, the foot, from the game of football learns a lot of things that are applicable to, to, to life, different types of people, uh, different backgrounds culturally, different races, different religious beliefs. All of these things are a part of forming and making you know, a togetherness, a cohesiveness that, that, that allows your team to function. Uh, that's true in football, it's true in the game of life. The bottom line is winning, but the building block is people. The kind of people who come to play and to work and to win. We want people of character. I think that. Uh, uh, no matter what, that has to be your building block and your foundation. We want the young man who wants to compete for a national championship. A C 
season for all things. For Bobby Ross, a championship for the University of Maryland football team. The championship of the Atlantic Coast Conference. A first banner for Bobby Ross and his players to raise above Bird State. A first step toward a larger dream, a national championship. For their second year with Bobby Ross, another winning season. Another major holiday bowl game. A trip to the Citrus Bowl in Orlando, Florida. Home of Disney World and Epcot Center. A trip to play the University of Tennessee. It begins with games, with running and throwing, with young men on a bursting field reaching for a ball in the roaring sky with hitting and hard work it begins with dreams it ends with dreams dreams of bird stadium of dancing by day dancing by night of victory and defeat of great plays and great players and great coaches well, Bobby Ross is a coach who cares very deeply about his players. Uh, it goes far beyond the football. He understands what a student athlete goes through. He knows we're between the ages of 18 and 23. He knows that we're young men looking for our purpose in our lives. And he understands that. And he also understands there the are commitments that we must keep to our, to our school work and to our football. And he's given us a purpose. And we followed that purpose. For the dancers and the leapers, for the throwers and the hitters, shining dreams of their golden time, when a season for challenge became a season for champions. 